If we did not know it before, we do now. The second-ranked Cardinals do not like to lose at home. If it were based on stats alone, I think everyone would agree he's the odds-on favorite. But the last couple games, yes. inconsistent on his part. David Padgett brought right up to the podium. Question after question after question. All were hard. All needed to be asked. But he did a good job of doing the best he could to answer them. Louisville hoping to make a statement. This, folks, is how you make a statement. Quentin Snyder, Ray Spaulding. Hey, you would sell your soul for that many titles. At least we have a soul. Oh, okay, okay there, Louisville Mike. Clearly, it is a house divided here. Now, back to Patino. Mentioned he left the facility about an hour ago at the entrance down there. We were the only ones who were able to catch up with him as he left the building. Coach, you tell us anything? Guys, you don't belong in this property. It really wasn't a surprise this year's Heisman went to Oklahoma's Baker Mayfield. That was expected. What was sort of unexpected, at least to folks around here in Louisville, was Lamar Jackson finishing a distant third in the votes. Todd Pletcher is always dreaming, able to overcome some sloppy conditions here at Churchill Downs and able to overcome some behavioral issues in the days leading up to the race. The eclipse was last week, and now everybody is wondering what to do with these glasses. I think I figured them out. You put them on, you watch the Reds play, and you miss all the bad plays. Easy to complain about the weather getting colder these last couple days, but folks, it always could be worse. Take a look at what the Colts were dealing with today in Buffalo. Eric, I gotta tell you, I'm excited to see Lamar Jackson play tomorrow, but I know this, he's gonna have it tough because he's not only gonna have to deal with this, the Mississippi State Cowbell, he's also gonna have to deal with that defense, and that is no joke. It almost From looks now fake, on. doesn't it? <laughs> And I, for one, welcome our alien overlord. Can you believe that? <laughs> as far as national anthem singers go, the Louisville Bats hit it right out of the park with Friday night's performer. Oh, say can you see? He's got such a deep, strong, uh, low voice. By the dawn's early light. And it just uh, resonates throughout the whole stadium. What's so proud? It was that voice that first caught the attention of Bats VP Greg Galliet but it didn't take long for him to realize Bradman was unlike any singer he'd ever met before. The rest of his stories that started to unfold and I learned more about him is just even more amazing. Well, first of all, I'm partially blind and I was also diagnosed with what is called Asperger's disorder, which is a form of autism. As one can probably imagine, getting around in life, let alone a ballpark, isn't easy for the 41-year-old. But when it comes to following his passion, there is nothing that can stand in his way. The fact that he lives by himself, he takes care of himself, he finds his own transportation down here and also heading back to his, uh, where he lives, it just totally blows me away. Ever since making his debut a few years ago, Brad's become a favorite right here at Louisville Slugger Field. In fact, when the team was asked to deliver a singer for this past season's ACC tournament, one of the first people they thought of was Brad. We had him sing the anthem for one game, then we brought him back on the finals, the championship day, and when he sang God Bless America, uh, the coaches just stopped in the middle of the game and came over and both shook his hand. It was another rousing ovation for Brad, something he says never gets old. When I hear the crowd applauding for me at the end, I mean, that's... And the that, that really is an encouragement to me because, you know, just letting them know that how well I'm doing. Brad. Mike Lissette, WDRB Sports. Some might be intimidated by the big stage of Madison Square Garden, but not those guys, not the Louisville Cardinals. Over the years, they seem to rise for the occasion at the world's most famous arena, and today against Memphis, no exception. Cards looking to win their 10th straight at MSG. They were feeling it early on from downtown. Second half starting to build a nice lead. First, the big block from Honest Mahmoud, one of seven rejections for him. That would eventually lead to this. Quentin Snyder left alone, and he makes him pay with a three. Team high 19 for Snyder, Louisville up 13. Memphis not going quietly. Jeremiah Martin with the jumper. That's capped off a 7-0 run for Memphis. Tubby Smith's team within four. They would get no closer. Cards going back to the deep ball. Dang Adele, three of his 15. Louisville as a team hit a season high 14 threes today. That one put him up seven. Then later, just to drive the point home, Snyder to race Balding. Big finish. 
Only had 12. Louisville gets the win. 81-72. Cardinals have now won four straight. Meanwhile, in Lexington, can't deny the Wildcats have been improving, but let's face it, they really have not been tested. In fact, before today's game with Virginia Tech, UK hadn't played a Power 5 team since their loss to Kansas last month. Head her up, and in case you're wondering, Quadra Green's not modeling for Ray-Ban. He's wearing those shades after getting poked in the eye. They seem to work for him. First half, Green driving and scoring. Two of his 17 also dished out five assists. Virginia Tech, though, not backing down. Ahmad Hill, one of the Hokies, seven first half threes. He led Tech with 20. Hokies up six to the half, and John Calipari did not like it one bit. Second half, UK got its act together. Off the miss, Quad A Green leading the charge. Down court, Kevin Knox. And Knox would not be denied. The big and one. He had a game high 21. And less than a minute ago, Cats up two. It's Hamadou Diallo with the dagger. He had 20. Wildcats take it 93-86. They won six in a row. John Lewis and Eric Crawford with a post game now from Ruff. Yeah, guys, a lot of big games for UK coming up. Well, we've still got more basketball coming up tonight. They got some extra basketball today in Indianapolis. Up next, we'll show you how the Hoosiers were able to come back and stun 18th ranked Notre Dame in overtime. Like any athlete, a good horse has to have a good shoe. Just like me or you, uh, the more comfortable you are with your shoes, the better you're able to perform. And so when Todd Pletcher needs these shoes on any of his horses, he goes straight to this father-son duo. Yes, he's Ray, could you help me out? And I said to myself, oh, gee, this guy seemed like such a nice guy. I'll take the job. That was 21 years ago. Ray Amato has been with Pletcher ever since. Together with his son, Ray Jr., the two prepare every one of Pletcher's horses for race day. That includes Always Dreaming, the favorite in this Saturday's Kentucky Derby. Well, can we help a horse win? What I like to say is we can help a horse run as fast as his ability will let him run. Shoeing each horse takes about 25 minutes. If we can make him feel comfortable, he'll stand better for us. The Amatos have got it down to a science. Well, of course you pull a shoe. You got to trim the sole. Trim out the frog. Then you got to fit the shoe. Bang it around. And... I'll tell you what, I was zipping, boy, when I was younger. All right, so you see the hammer and you see the nail, and then you see the action. Now you're probably thinking they're hurting the horse, but Amato says that's not the case, and that's because he's doing the job the right way. It's just like your fingernail. If you trim it correctly, like mine are, then it's fine. Sure, the job has its dangers. Well, you don't want to be kicked. You don't, you don't, no, no, nobody wants to be kicked. But when done correctly, great things can happen. We're going to win it again this year. Yeah, they've got the tools, but most certainly the Amatos have the talent. Mike Lissette, WDRB Sports.